So welcome to video three uh, on day three. And uh, this is uh, the video in which we take up a spiritual practice inspired by a wisdom from world religions by uh, Sir John Templeton. And the, the practice today uh, the, is called establishing conscious unity with your spiritual center. Establishing conscious unity with your spiritual center. Now notice this language is very carefully chosen. Um, spiritual center. This is not the kind of expression that's associated with, with a, that necessarily associated up front with a specific a set of doctrines. Now, religious, relig the religious world is always filled with people who are sensitive to doctrinal difference, and so of course there's a doctrine here, but the attempt is clearly being made to try to find a way to express beyond doctrine and language that which is essential to spiritual practice. There's no reference here to your heart or to your soul or to a specific deity. There's an attempt to try to find the kind of what's essential to the spiritual life, which is that inner orientation, the turning within. This is without turning within, turning off for a while, everything external, there cannot be this uh, uh, awareness of the of, at the center of our being of this extraordinary dimension to life, this, this place where the brightness of living is experienced. Where, and so, so perhaps to give a sense of this, how uh, Sir John uh, experienced it, I'll, I'll just read a few lines from, from the book where he describes this as he writes, quote, we are essentially spiritual beings. Our world is essentially a spiritual world. And this underlying controlling forces may be identified as spiritual laws or principles. When we establish conscious unity with the spiritual essence, we begin to recognize that this is a good world. We can behold goodness in all people, and we can draw goodness from them. All right, so that's the basic idea that underlies the practice. And uh, so let me just guide you through a... Uh, uh, um, a sequence of steps, and I'll do this a bit more methodically. I, I think I will read the steps this time instead of just doing it freely so that we can together generate something of that uh, inner quietness that allows us to experience conscious unity in our spiritual center. So we can begin by uttering a short prayer. Perhaps you have a favorite prayer. Perhaps you have a mantra. Or perhaps you have a sacred, uh, a sacred a name that's, that's central to you. Or perhaps all of that's already a bit too religious. And so what you can do is just focus on your breath. And so for a moment or two, let's become aware of our breath. How often are you aware of your breath? Think about that for a moment. Become aware of my breath. We're usually only aware of our breath when we're short of breath. When we're running and, we're, and we, we suddenly we're out of breath, but otherwise, how often do we actually think about our breath? But in Buddhism in particular, but also in some forms of, uh, of, of Christian uh, yogic mysticism, hesychasm, for instance, and in other traditions, the focus upon the breath is central. So become aware of your breath. Bring your attention to your breathing. Note the next time you breathe out, the quality of your breath. Is your breathing calm or is it, uh, is, it, uh, is it jagged? Is your breathing more moist or is it dry? Is it slow? Is it fast? This is a basic mindfulness technique and it's very restful. It's rest inducing. Already, I, even doing it with you in front of this camera, I'm feeling more relaxed. I'm just focused on my breath. You could stay here for an hour. That can get perhaps tedious after a while, so you'd have to introduce more practices. But again, try to filter out my voice now, or keep it in the background, and become aware of your breath. Of the intake of air and the out breath. A gentle rhythm. And even in becoming aware of it, we start to feel calmer. Now, when you're pulled away, as you inevitably will be, to some sensation or a thought or a memory, 
just gently bring your attention back to your breath. Do it, because your mind may have wandered. Bring it back to the breath. And again. And again. And you can do this at home for longer periods of time. And you may discover, if you do this for a few minutes, that your mind starts to become still. It starts to quiet down quite naturally. This in itself is a great discovery. Many of us don't know we have this capacity. This is a basic spiritual muscle can look at our breath or something else. The breath is very convenient. We always have it with us as long as we're alive. Observe the breath, and we find that our minds are slowing down. They're becoming still, or at least a little bit quieter. And if you were to prolong this, you would actually start to experience a kind of little touch, a little tinge, a little twinge of happiness. But that's going a little bit deeper. All right, if you found some inner stillness right now, and let's say you practice this later, you can now ask yourself a fundamental question. Who am I really? Who is having this experience? And wait for an answer. No, don't go with the first answer that might arise, a memory or a thought, or maybe you think of your job description or, your, your, or the role you're playing at home or in, in, among your friends or uh, what, you're, what you do at work. No, no, that's not who you are. It's not the who, that's not the, that's not the you we're interested in right now. It's important not to downplay any of those roles. But this is not the person we're interested in discovering right now. Then who am I if I'm not that? Another answer may present itself that I'm my body. Yes, we have these bodies, but from a spiritual perspective, we're only temporarily inhabiting these forms. Our spiritual self, our spiritual center is eternal. And eternal is a lot longer than the 70, 80, or 90 years that I will inhabit this body. Which, which, which part of my everyday consciousness is that self? That's the self we're after. But if I focus upon, oh, right now I, I may sense a little bit I'm standing, so my knees are a little bit, I can become aware of my knees being a little bit, I don't know, a little bit wobbly, maybe it's time for a break. Great. Who is having that experience? See if you can't wheel around backwards and bring your attention to the whatever it is, to that self within you that's aware of your knees, that's aware of that memory that just pinged up from somewhere. That's aware of, oh, that reminder, I have to do this later. Yes, that's not who you are. You are the one that is aware of that. And so this is this place of quietness where we simply observe what arises. This is an a, a extremely, apparently simple, and even some might say simple-minded practice, but it's not. I'm talking about it now, and and it's not really about talking, it's about doing it. So bring your attention back to the breath. Stay with your breath. And so many times as your attention wanders off, gently bring your attention, your point of focus back to your breath a hundred times if necessary. Maybe that's too much for today. Ten times and then we can do something else. Remember, the spiritual life is not about forcing. Come back to that place of inner quietness. And there in that inner quietness is where we can revive ourselves. We can revive our spiritual nature. If you stay with this, you'll find insights coming that are break that can give make breakthroughs in, in, in log jams in your life. And again, if you stay with this for some time, you will you will feel it very quickly, a kind of reduction in stress. 
But as the mind becomes still, as your stress level goes down, this, this bright background, this radiance, I like to refer to it as the radiance. Sir John refers to it as the brightness and living. This, this spiritual center, you'll become consciously one with it and you'll experience a profound sense of immortality, conscious immortality right here, right now in this body.